All right, welcome back. We continue live right here. Pittsburgh CW, Bob Pompiani, Andrew Filipponi. Call us, 412-575-2600. All right, Andrew, there are four options there, according to Pro Football Focus Fantasy Football. James Conner, and I don't think he's going to be the choice. Travis Etienne, who is a really good running back out of Clemson, as we know. Najee Harris out of Alabama. And then Aaron Jones, who's a free agent out of Green Bay. I don't think they'll meet his price. I still think if I had to pick one of those four, it would be Harris. But it may be none of those four. What do you say? I think that's the right answer. Um, look, I mean, if they take a running back in the first round, Bob, I mean, he better be a great player because these guys have very short careers. How long was Le'Veon Bell a Steeler for? He never got a second contract. I mean, is that what you want out of a first-round player, that he's a four-year guy like it's college football? I mean, that's not what you look for out of first-round picks. You look for guys that have longevity, you know, eight, nine, ten-year careers like Marquise Pouncey, who just retired. I don't want the 24th pick in the draft to be a short timer. And you can't, I mean, for every Derrick Henry, Bob, there's a Trent Richardson. Oh, absolutely. You know, if I told you, if I told you that Najee Harris was going to have Mark Ingram's career, would you take him with the 24th pick? No. Nope. I wouldn't. No. Nope. Right. So, I mean, that's the history. Well, look at the great, running backs. you know, we talk about running backs, too. You mentioned that. What was Derrick Henry? He wasn't a first-round pick, a second-round pick, if second. I recall. Second Most round of pick. the good ones are second-round picks. Le'Veon Bell was a second-round pick. A lot of them are third- and fourth-round picks. You can find them, and I Harris agree. isn't going to be there, though. You know, Harris is not going to be where the Steelers pick later in the second round. I don't think there's any way he's going to be on the board for them. He may not be there when so, they take him in the first round or if they pick at the first right. round. So, I exactly. get that. The, the, the offensive line has got to be the number one priority. Absolutely. I'm with you 100% because, to me, that is a short-term and long-term solution. You know where I stand on Roethlisberger and what the Steelers are with him. But I think if you get, in a, if you get a left tackle, you get someone at center, these are guys that are here for a number of years. Uh, so, you know, I'm all in favor of that because I think it makes the Steelers a better team down the road as well. Running back doesn't do that. That's a Band-Aid on this team to try to make them better. And I'm sorry. I don't care who the running back is unless he is Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley or one of those guys. You need an offensive line, and you need the threat of a downfield passing game, two things that are big question marks for this team. Bob, I think they're going to do running back on the cheap. I think they're going to see if there's, a, if there's another running back that gets cut in the next couple of months, a la what happened to uh, Leonard Fournette last April, and pick up a guy like that. Because I don't think they want to give up the comp pick the next year for a running back in free agency. And it's not like they have a lot of money to spend on running backs in free agency either. Yeah. Guy like Duke Johnson's out there on the market. There are a lot of guys you can find, but But uh, he's guess not a what? first and second down back. No, you know, he's more of a third down back. I understand player. what I'm saying to you. If you get an offensive line, running backs look better because of it. If you don't sure. have one, 100%. it doesn't matter who, how, who they are or how good they are, they're not going to look as good. We have some tweets here. Sean Kramer on Twitter at KD Pomp at Pony Express. He says the Steelers need to build the O-line, then you'll find a run game. Uh, Colonel Slade says uh, the Steelers would absolutely be nuts to pass up Travis Etienne if he's available. See, I don't agree with that. Uh, I, he may be a very good running back, as it turns out, and I think all these guys will have their day, their day in the NFL, but that's not what they need right off the bat, so I disagree with that. And then Mark DeStefano wants to know, Andrew, what is your favorite Derek Watt dark horse? And I'm not sure what he means by that. Um... Uh, if he means dark horse to get cut, yes, I'd love that. Because <laughs> at this point, what purpose is Derek Watt serving? He's the highest, he's the most overpaid special teams player in the NFL because he doesn't kick big field goals for you, like, you know, highly paid specialists. And he doesn't play fullback. They don't use him in the offense at all. And, Bob, I don't see that changing. You know, as long as Ben Roethlisberger's here and they're in the shotgun as much as they are, I don't see a role in the offense for Derek Watt. No. Do you? No, and it's a waste of three and a half million a year, to be honest. And exactly. when they did it, I thought, okay, there was some, there was a small portion of me that said, well, that's a way to tell TJ they're very serious about Watson, Pittsburgh, whatever. But that's not, it didn't make sense because he wasn't used, he was injured, whatever. All right, we got a lot of calls. We're going to get to him, Andrew. We got Pete and Squirrel Hill first up. What's up, Pete? How you doing? Hey, what's up, man? How are you tonight? Hey, Bob, two things. A comment, a question, please. A comment. Anybody want to change that NBA logo from Jerry West to Kobe Bryant out of their mind? Jerry West playing days with the Lakers, Bob. His GM job with the Lakers and his front office job with the Warriors. His thumbprint, Bob, is on 23 NBA finals. But my question is, Peter Kirchner was on SportsCenter today. 
talking about different teams, Tofa and the Jays today, because opening day is a month away. He referred to the Jays and all the recent off-season signings, Springer this year in particular, about the Jays going from being a small market team to a big-time player. Well, five and a half million people in Toronto, second biggest city in North mm-hmm. America. How are they a small market team? Thanks. Yeah, they're not a small market team. You know, they, they could be uh, acting as if they are one, but they're not, Andrew. These, these teams have money, and if they want to, they can spend whatever they want to spend. Um, and that's, again, up to you as an owner. You can either do it or don't do it. So. Well, plus they've got an en- entire country behind that team. Right. You know, it's not just Toronto's team, it's Canada's team. But the one thing that they typically have an issue with is Canadian dollar. The currency rate, the exchange rate can sometimes be problematic for them, but... No, I mean, I, are they like the Milwaukee Brewers or the Pittsburgh Pirates? Absolutely not. Jim joins us right now in Manaka. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. Evening, uh, Bob. Uh, I just wanted Hi, to uh, mention uh, I, I agree totally with uh, uh, the idea of drafting a, uh, a uh, running back in the first round is not done often because it's such an instinctive position. Uh, but I totally think that uh, this the same can be said for centers. How many centers go in the first round of a draft? Uh, I mean, if we're looking for Webby or if we're looking for Damani Dawson or Pouncey, I guess, you might uh, want to uh, take a first-round uh, shot, but there's probably 10 or 15 Centers in the uh, in the uh, Division One ball who can who can land on a roster. I'd just like to hear your especially opinion. at an elite level, Andrew. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Unless there's one there and there's one from Alabama, I don't know if he's going to be there or not. There are others, but you know, to me, if you're going to draft a center who you expect to be here for a long time, he better be one of the tops. Well, we've seen the Steelers get by with less at center. Sure, they had you know three, you know, two obvious Hall of Famers and possibly a third borderline. And Pouncey, they've also won Super Bowls with guys like Jeff Hardings in their 30s at center. So there's no rule that says elite center is a prerequisite for a championship roster. My only point before was an elite center like a Pouncey or Alex Mack, for example, who was another all-decade team guy by the Pro Football Hall of Fame who's still playing. These guys play a long time. By and large, the great running back does not especially a running back that you pick in the 20s. We're not talking about Ezekiel Elliott or Christian McCaffrey at the top of the draft. It's a very good running back, but it's probably not a guy that is going to you know, be an Adrian Peterson that is you know, going to completely change the way that defenses prepare to play against you. We have some hoops to talk about. We have more calls on the way. We're going to talk about Pitt and Justin Champagny. Might it be his last home game? We'll get into that in West Virginia. Had a chance to win a game tonight against Baylor and let it slip away. It's all coming up next right here live on the Ireland Contracting Natalie Sports Call. Don't go away.